Hello, my name is Avidu and welcome to my presentation on the Student Initiated Project on the Design and Development of Internal Tennis Ball Collecting Robot. As the technology demand grows in the application of sports and recreational activities, the Autonomous Tennis Ball Collecting Robot was proposed with the goal to improve training efficiencies of tennis sessions, providing athletes with a more enjoyable experience. During professional tennis matches, the ball can be expected to be in play for less than 20% of any match. This percentage is expected to be much lower in amateur level games, not to mention the training sessions for complete beginners. The student initiated project aims to develop the autonomous tennis ball collecting robot, which uses computer vision to detect tennis balls through cameras. This product is intended to be used at the end of training sessions, where it will scan around the field, locate and collect tennis balls inside the current court area. The research objectives has been well defined as three key aspects, hardware development, navigation and localization, and object detection. We have divided these into two sections, a physical system operating in the tennis court and a software system providing the sensor signals to form an understanding and perception of the environment. When defining this project, we set the goal of building a robust and reliable robotic platform able to navigate itself within the tennis court environment. To accurately navigate itself, a reliable control system would also need to be designed. Prior to designing the robotic platform, the team conducted research on existing autonomous ball collecting robots. The team noticed some common similarities between the existing ball collectors. For instance, they all either used a sweeping or roller motorized mechanism for ball collection, which constrained the robotic platform to being short in height and long in length. This further constrained the ball capacities of these devices as it is not possible for the balls to be stacked on top of each other. These devices also required four motors, two for the drive wheels and two for the collection mechanism. The team understood the commercial potential of an autonomous tennis ball collector and undertook commercial design considerations in mind. These include the robot needing to be able to fit in the trunk of a car, have a 90 ball capacity, have a battery life able to withstand the days of tennis, and the robot weighing 5 kgs or less. The finalized mechanical concept of the robotic platform involved integrating the ball collection mechanism with the drive wheels. This reduced the motors required by the platform to only two. The platform works by driving towards the tennis balls. The balls are guided into the tunnel of the robot. As the robot continues to drive, the tennis balls will make contact simultaneously with the wheel and the sidewall of the platform. Here, the tennis ball is picked up by the wheel and traversed along the tunnel until it reaches the top and falls into a designated storage compartment. The mechanical platform can be described as a difficult to drive robot, where the relationship between the two wheel velocities dictate the direction and angle which the robot will travel. The dynamics can be described by the following equations shown on the left. The Justin Nano microcomputer acts as a top level controller and these equations are calculated on board at real time. The desired speeds of each wheels are then sent to an Arduino, which controls the motors. A PI speed control software is installed on board, allowing for it to convert the desired speeds of each wheels into voltages for the two motor drivers. The team chose to use two 12 volt DC motors with optical encoders. The encoders would be used to calculate the speed of each wheel. However, the team discovered that a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency at 25Hz would also need to be implemented due to the coarse output response attributed to the high frequencies between discrete levels. The operational algorithm of the robot is shown on the left. Effectively, if the robot detects a ball, the robot will reorientate itself and drive towards the closest ball. This algorithm is shown on the right and established using a ULP controller which determines the difference in desired wheel velocities by calculating the horizontal difference between the center of the camera, shown as a red line on the top, and the location of the tennis ball. If no tennis ball is detected, then the robot will rotate clockwise, scanning the environment looking for balls. If after two revolutions a ball is not detected, then the robot will enter a standby mode. When defining this project, we set the goal of developing a robust and reliable object detection software able to detect tennis balls in any tennis court environment. Since tennis courts exist in various colors, in order for the object detection software to be effective, it would need to detect tennis balls irrespective of the color of the tennis court. 
This objective has been met with resistance in the past as hardware limitations constrained prior tennis robots to blob detection implementations. However, with the release of the NVIDIA Jetson Nano microcomputer, this project aims to overcome this resistance with the implementation of a YOLO object detection method. For the purpose of a case study, both a generic implementation of blob detection and a YOLO model have been implemented. Blob detection software relies on image processing to detect tennis balls. The implementation of blob detection is relatively straightforward with the hue, saturation, and value thresholds being manually tuned to remove the background and isolate the tennis ball. The video image is then converted into a binary image where a white pixel will represent a possible part of a tennis ball. The image is then morphologically analyzed for circular features above a predetermined pixel size. This is blob detection. The main implementation of the software is that the image used to tune the HSV thresholds will be highly influential to the accuracy and robustness of the detection software. YOLO differs from blob detection as it treats object detection as a regression problem. To implement a YOLO model, the CNN must first be trained with a data set of images. For this project, we created a custom data set of 70 images, with 50 of these images being used to train the network and 20 to validate it. To ensure that the YOLO model will be able to detect tennis balls irrespective of the tennis court color, the 50 training images consisted of tennis balls in a variety of tennis court colors. To prevent the YOLO algorithm from relying solely on color or shape to determine what a tennis ball was, 10 of the validation images were of green or circular objects which are visually similar to tennis balls but were not. These included objects such as a green and yellow car and an apple. A case study was conducted to quantitatively measure the performance of both object detection implementations. The case study consists of two tests. The first was testing the implementation on static images from three types of tennis courts and the second was testing the object detection software dynamically in a field test. For a static test, the YOLO model was able to detect all the balls and outperform blob detection in each of the three sections. The blob detection performed best in clay court images, however this was expected as the image used to tune the HSV threshold for blob detection had a clay court environment. For the dynamic test, the test was conducted on an empty car park. The lighting was dim and the background was dark. Neither the YOLO model nor the blob detection were designed for such an environment. The performance of blob detection was very poor, only able to detect 20% of the balls. However, the YOLO model was still able to detect all the tennis balls. An all mode of the YOLO model is shown on the right. However, the team discovered that there were six instances where the YOLO model falsely identified an object as a tennis ball. It was realized that the YOLO model was too persistent on using the color and circular features to determine if an object was a tennis ball or not. Some examples of the false positives are shown on the left here. It was realized that the cause of the false positives was a direct consequence of the small data set used and that the YOLO model will need to be retrained with at least an additional 1,000 images to lower the false positives to an acceptable level. The case study concludes that the regression-based YOLO model allows for a more robust and reliable object detection implementation to be possible, especially compared to block detection. However, in order for this to be achieved, a large data set of images must be used to train the CNN of the model. As almost all prior tennis ball robots relied on blob detection, this project also acts as verification that hardware now exists to allow for the implementation of YOLO for small robotic tennis applications. Experiments have been conducted to test the autonomy of our vehicle. However, these have not been as successful as we wanted. Future work will need to be done to ensure that our robot better follows our robotic algorithm. The robot is currently designed to use object detection and odometry readings for path planning and navigation. However, odometry readings are subject to cumulative errors, so the longer the robot will operate, the larger the error. The team plans to solve this problem by implementing SAM software to better navigate the robot within the court environment. SAM will be used to track the robot's location relative to the tennis court in real time. SLAM works by looking for distinct objects called landmarks and calculating the relative distance and direction these landmarks are from the robot. As the tennis court layout is fairly constant, the team has decided to use the court lines as the landmarks. An illustration of the perceived track position of the robot using both the odometry and SLAM methods are shown on the left. The blue tracing represents the odometry method and the orange tracing represents the SLAM method. As it can be seen, the longer the robot is operating, the further the two methods will diverge, hence proving why the SLAM method is required. It is important that the robot can also operate efficiently around fences, as displaced tennis balls 
tend to concentrate themselves around the fenced perimeter of the tennis court. This will be done with the addition of a 2D LiDAR sensor, which will provide the relative distance measurements of the objects to the robot. The LiDAR will also be used to prevent objects from colliding with humans, as it is expected that the robot will operate whilst some tennis players are still on the court. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening.